Good day and thank you for watching the ACS Library. My name is Kyle and my goal is to help you prepare for the private pilot checkride for free in just five minutes a day. In today's video, we cover glide distance in the Piper Archer. You're out in the practice area performing clearing turns and the engine sputters. Oil pressure is in the red and shortly after you find yourself with a dead engine that won't restart. You're at 5,000 feet AGL and the nearest airport runway is seven miles away. Do you know off the top of your head if you can make it or not? You should. We'll answer that question in today's video. Before we begin, confidence is key during any emergency situation. You want to be confident that both you and your aircraft will perform in a predictable manner. While it is great to know expected glide distances based on the charts, to develop real confidence, it is very important that we go out and practice engine out procedures in a variety of different density altitudes and wind velocities, making note of our aircraft's actual glide ratio in these situations. To get an idea of what kind of glide distance we can expect, let's look in our aircraft's POH. Open to the table of contents and locate the performance section. Turn to the performance section table of contents and look for the glide range chart. We should read the notes before using the chart. We see that these distances reflect the power off glide range with the flaps up at 76 knots indicated or best glide speed at 2,550 pounds with no wind. Any change in these conditions will of course alter glide distance. Our glide ratio is the distance we can expect to cover per thousand feet we descend. At a height of 10,000 feet, we expect a glide distance of about 17 nautical miles. Based on this information, we expect a glide ratio of roughly 1.7 for this aircraft. Let's apply this glide ratio to our engine failure scenario from earlier, using this easy to memorize equation. The sum of our glide ratio, multiplied by our height above obstacles divided by 1,000, leaves us with our expected glide distance. As long as we have this equation and our aircraft's glide ratio memorized, we can calculate glide distance at any altitude. Based on our expected glide ratio of 1.7 with a height of 5,000 feet AGL, we should expect a glide distance of roughly 8.5 nautical miles. If we look over to our chart, we see that the ratio works out pretty well. I've plotted our 5,000 foot descent from 9,500 feet to 4,500 feet in this example. From 9,500 feet down to the surface, we expect to glide about 16 nautical miles total. From 4,500 feet to the surface, we expect to glide about 7.5. We should subtract the distance that we will glide from 4,500 to the surface from the distance we expect to glide from 9,500 to the surface. Once we've done that, we are left with our glide distance from 9,500 down to 4,500, or about 8.5 nautical miles. In our example problem, we found ourselves 7 nautical miles from the nearest airport, which means we should make it there with a favorable amount of altitude to spare. At this point, we should not hesitate to turn towards the airport if we haven't already, and now would be a good time to squawk 7700 and call ahead to let anybody in the area know to clear the airspace for us. Remember, these glide distances are expected values. It is always a good idea to get out there and make note of the glide ratios to be expected in actual flight. They are easy to memorize and will save you a lot of time in an emergency. This concludes today's video covering engine out glide distance in the Piper Archer. As always, thank you so much for checking out the ACS library. If you've learned something from today's video, I hope that you might like or share it. If you're interested in seeing more, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to the right of that to enable notifications. Questions and feedback are always welcome in the comments section. Thanks again and safe flying.